I've always looked forward to playing the Shin Megami Tensei games. Something about negotiating with demons, fusing them to make stronger demons and alignment choices has fascinated me. So when I heard that Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, originally on the PlayStation 2, known without the 3 in the US and known as Shin Megami Tensei Lucifer's Call and Power Regions, was getting an HD remaster, I was pretty over the moon about it, if you excuse the pun. In Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster, which I'll just shorten to Nocturne, not to be confused with the PC game of the same name, you play as a character that you can give a name to. Your character is on their way to see their teacher at the Shinjuku Medical Center alongside a couple of friends. Along the way, you meet up with a writer for an occult magazine who'll give you an issue detailing a cult. After finding the medical center mysteriously empty aside from you and your friends, you're given a keycard and asked to explore the medical center's basement. After an event in which you're saved by your teacher, she explains that an event called the Conception will happen and for you to find her so she can explain everything. Through further events, a mysterious young boy accompanied by an old woman will drop a Magatama into your character's eye so that they can survive in the new, now ruined Tokyo. Reawakening as the Demi Fiend, your goal is to search through the ruins of Tokyo to find your friends and understand what's going on while uncovering the forces at play. Ultimately, you can side with the forces or choose to reject them depending on key events in the game. Nocturne introduces many features which you'll find in future games, such as third-person exploration and the press turn mechanic, where exploiting your enemy's weakness or gaining a critical hit on them would result in additional actions, while keeping aspects that those familiar with other games in the series are well known for, such as demon negotiation, fusing and the moon phase, though the latter has been redefined as phases of Kagetsuchi. The HD remaster features three versions of Nocturne that can be played, the original release of the game, as well as the Chronicles Edition and the Maniacs Edition, with the latter being available as DLC. The Western releases of the PlayStation 2 original are based off the Maniacs Edition, which included a new opening movie, the addition of the Labyrinth of Amala, which introduces a subplot involving Demons of the Fiend variety, as well as a brand new ending, new demons, and of course, Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Japan got a version called the Maniacs Chronicle Editions, which included these changes but replaced Dante with Raido Kuzunoha XIV and Goto Doji from the Devil Summoner Raido Kuzunoha games. The Chronicle Edition is free DLC and the Maniacs Edition with Dante is paid DLC. The remaster also adds new features such as English and Japanese voice acting, both which I thought were pretty good, and an easier difficulty as free DLC. DLC areas to farm experience and money, or marker as the game calls it, and DLC for overworld and overworld battle music from other Shin Megami Tensei games. The remaster also added in some quality of life changes, such as being able to choose the skills fused demons would inherit, one of Dante's skills getting the Pierce ability to finally put him at skill parity of Raido, and an updated script, suspended save feature, and being able to change difficulty during the game. But with these changes, is the game any good? Find out in... The Good. The core mechanics and features of the Megami Tensei series, or Mega Ten for short, are one of the things I like the most in this game. The ability to talk and negotiate with demons is a fun aspect, and is even expanded on with your demons also being able to negotiate and play an active role in convincing a demon to join your team. Demons are fickle creatures and will often ask for marker, an item, or to absorb some of your energy before deciding whether it's worth joining you or not. Sometimes they won't join you at all and just leave, sometimes they may give you an item or marker, and worst case scenario, they'll attack you. As you build up your team of demons, they can also level up and learn new skills, as well as give you items if they appreciate you. Some demons have the ability to change if certain requirements are met. The behaviour of demons are also affected by the current Kagutsuchi phase, with full phase making them drunk on power, and either making the recruiting option easier or more difficult, or the new phase in which demons are more calmer and easier to talk to. There are certain demons that can only be conversed with during a full phase, so it always pays to experiment around. On that topic, you can also fuse demons to create new ones. As you progress through the game, you'll come across a facility known as the Cathedral of Shadows, which will allow you to fuse demons with the result inheriting skills from their parents. And believe me, you can spend a lot of time in marker making sure the demons you use in your party, as well as the fusion materials, have the right skill set. Fusion results aren't always guaranteed, and you will have accidents which may be a nice surprise. As a little hint for new players, if you're playing through the Maniacs or Chronicles edition of the game, the Labyrinth of Amala will reward you if you either keep the pixie that joins you at the start of the game, or keep track of the demon that it's created if you'd fused her. Nonetheless, the main features of the series were what drew me to it, and this game does not disappoint. One of the things I liked about the game is the change to the alignment system. Traditionally in a Mega Ten game, there tends to be two forces at play. The forces of law, which promotes order and safety, and the forces of chaos where its choice of freedom results in survival of the fittest. 
Anyone familiar with Mega Ten games will also know that lore isn't always the best way to go, and sometimes chaos isn't as bad as it makes itself out to be. You can also be the dividing force and reject both alignments choosing to stay neutral. Nocturne, however, changes this up a bit. Instead of alignments, key characters throughout the game's story will have their reasons for doing what they do, and this is represented as their ideology of their perfect world. As the Demi-Fiend, you are the deciding factor on which reason you choose to support, and this will affect the ending of the game. You can choose to follow one of these reasons, or you can choose to reject them. The reasons aren't as black and white, and I do like the approach to them against siding with the forces of law or chaos, or rejecting them to stay neutral. There is a bit of philosophy to them, and it would be neat seeing things like this explored in future games. Going through the game again to see how things would go if you did side with another reason adds to the replayability feature, and if you folks like the first person exploration view of older games, then that gets unlocked as a bonus if you complete the game. Of course, you can switch between this and the third person view. Unless you're playing the game on the merciful difficulty which just trivialises everything, some of the battles in this game can provide quite a challenge, with some of them serving to remind you about the importance of buffing your team and debuffing your enemies. The first fiend Matador you come across as part of the Chronicles Maniacs version is the perfect example of this. Matador is already infamous for beating teams that are underprepared for him, but as long as you know how to buff yourself, provide decent force resistance and remove his buffs since his high evasion can cost you turns, then you'll do just fine. Learning the weaknesses of your enemies and benefiting from buffing your party and debuffing your enemies will make boss fights in this game a lot easier, especially when you go further down the labyrinth of Amala later. Passing on skills to your demons will also trivialise fights, especially if you make use of Bright Might and Dark Might to guarantee you critical hits with physical attacks during a new or full Kagasuchi phase. The Demi Fiend also has access to different Magatama that he can ingest. These Magatama will affect his stats, strengths and weaknesses, as well as what skills he can learn when he levels up. This is also very handy to know, as you can find yourself ingesting different Magatama so that the boss won't be able to kill you so easy, because if the Demi Fiend falls, it's game over. The battle system is pretty deep, and while it's simple to get your head around, getting strategies in place will certainly pay off in the long run. However, Nocturne isn't without its faults, so let's talk about those in... The Bad Let's address the elephant in the room first. For an HD remaster, there are certainly a number of issues that need to be raised regarding the quality of it. First of all, the game features some compressed music tracks, despite higher quality music being available. This is most noticeable with battle music. which of course is pretty jarring compared to some of the other tracks. If you offer music from other Mega Ten games as DLC and it sounds good, why not fix up what you already have? While there are means of replacing the music, this isn't something the average player should be doing to experience better quality audio. The visuals have been touched up very well, but I still find the shift to pre-rendered cutscenes a little jarring, and is especially noticeable when you start the game up on the title screen. The game is also capped at 30 frames, which funny enough is something I'm okay with. The game isn't really intensive on action since it's a turn based JRPG, so I don't feel the frame rate should really matter here, though having the option to change the frame rate cap would be nice to cater to all audiences. It's a good thing I detailed the differences between the versions of Nocturne earlier in the review. For newer players wanting to try their hand at meeting Raido or Dante or taking on the Fiends, you'll be sorely disappointed if you go straight into a new game that is the base Nocturne experience, which did not have any of these features. Of course, you can find this out as early as prior to getting to the Shinjuku Medical Center, as there's an NPC you can talk to who will describe Dante or Raido depending on the version you're playing. But to someone wanting to try out Nocturne for the first time, this can be a trap for them, causing a lot of time to be wasted when they can't find Matador in the place he's supposed to appear at. I feel there should be more of a detailed description or disclaimer before you start the game to let you know what version you're about to play and what you're getting yourself into. Other than that, I can't really fault the game on much else, so let's wrap it up with... The Opinion Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne was a really fun game and a must have for any JRPG fan back during the 6th generation of consoles. 
The remaster captures the fun I had playing these games and a lot of the quality of life additions, such as skill inheritance, voice acting, and the ability to play the game with Raido as the guest instead of Dante, as well as the latter finally receiving skill parity of the former, was something I appreciated. The core gameplay features and mechanics were what drew me to the series and it hasn't disappointed. The approach to the alignment system was also appreciated where individuals had their own reasons to reshape the world instead of strictly siding with lore or chaos. As a remaster though I found that the audio quality left something to be desired, given that better quality audio exists, and if you had purchased all of the DLC of the game, newer players may end up starting the base version instead of the one with their intended guest character, leading to a less complete experience. If you enjoy the idea of talking to demons, teaming up with them and taking on the ideologies of others in a turn based JRPG, then by all means this game is worth picking up, though prices at the time of this review are pretty steep compared to newer games. The issues I had with this game you can persevere through and I don't feel are deal breakers if you want to enjoy Nocturne. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster Dai Sojo out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.